it's time it's time to talk about your garden but noel aiken lead horticulturist of the petiti garden centers is joining us so noel instead of talking about the gardens we're talking about something we haven't spoke of i don't think in a quite a long time is hummingbirds you know every once in a while you can i'm always outside and i see one but how do you how do you create a gardener what, what do you do to your garden and your flowers that can attract the hummingbirds and what do they do for the flowers Absolutely. There are many things that you can do and whenever you want to attract wildlife into the garden, you want to make sure that they have plenty of food, water, shelter, and of course we like to provide um, you know, areas where they can raise young and also make sure that we're taking care of uh, the garden being very sustainable, not spraying chemicals in the area and so forth too. Is there a specific kind of flower that attracts hummingbirds or a specific kind of um, uh, cluster of flowers? You know, can you have one or do you need a lot of, of those type of flowers? Whenever you're attracting the hummingbirds, you want diversity for sure. And Scott, they always go for the reds, oranges, deep pink color. So if you have a lot of red color in the garden, that's always gonna bring them towards your garden. And then of course, after that, always look for plant material that have long tubular flowers or trumpet shaped flowers. They love those trumpet and tube shapes because there's always a lot of nectar hidden in those flowers. So do the hummingbirds, do they actually, I don't, don't want to use the word remember, but do, do they remember, you know, where you have these flowers? You know, if you have them one year to, to the next, uh, does it kind of sink into their, to their you know, small brains that this is the place to go? Or is this, or do you have to kind of do <laughs> yes. a reinforcing behavior kind of thing? Oh no, they actually, they'll bring, they will remember and they will come back to that same spot to feed and of course raise young and so forth. So a family of hummingbirds, uh, you know, as soon as they discover your garden and your plants, if you put a hummingbird feeder out there, that's always great. They're gonna come back and they're gonna bring others. So that, that's really, really good, yeah. Now what about the weather? I know, you know, we had a whole lot of rain in the spring and then, you know, in the last two or three weeks, with the exception of the last couple of days, it's been pretty dry. Uh, what type of weather do hummingbirds like? Do they like the higher humidity? Do they like the dry conditions? You know, or does that really even matter? I think just your warm, sunny weather, of course, they go into torpor in the evening, so their body temperature totally lowers. They're, you know, they, are, <laughs> they have to wake up and, of course, warm up in order to get their heart going and their wings going again. Um, so we never see them this early in the morning, typically. It's got to, you know, it's going to take some time, especially after a rainstorm or what have you, to heat up again and then start flying through the, the, the garden center here and, and around around our garden. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get them going. Usually around 10, 30, 11, noon, you'll, you'll start to see them really activating around the gardens. You know, we always talk about how animals and birds, they act differently when storms approach uh, with the pressure differences in the year. Do hummingbirds react the same way? In other words, could their behavior be a little more erratic as maybe a predictor of some storms coming in? I was always kind of curious about that. I don't, you know, that's a really great question. I know about the plants, but I'm not yeah. sure about that. <laughs> it's okay, no problem. And do hummingbirds typically stay active well into the fall, you know, with the shortened days and as the temperatures cool down? In other words, can we keep the hummingbirds around, you know, deep into September and October? Usually through September. So you'll still see them flying around our gardens in Northeast Ohio through September. October's getting a little bit late. We, we want them to take that trip going back down uh, south. So, but as long as you have a lot of plant diversity growing all through the season, early spring bloomers like azaleas and lilacs, you know, bringing in your perennial flowers and your annual flowers and then moving and having color still and those trumpet flowers all the way into fall. That's really the best thing that you can do. Noel, it's always a pleasure. Noel Aiken, uh, lead horticulturist for Petiti Garden Centers. Noel, have a great day and uh, stay cool. Thank you, you too.